When people ask what my favorite UK clay shooting competition is, the answer can only be the Hull Pro One Challenge. Oh, welcome to hell. Every year, a varied course of 120 targets test every angle of a shooter's equipment and ability. This is where the Pro One becomes the Pro One. Throwing up stuff that you weren't really mentally prepared for this morning. Yeah. On top of that, the atmosphere of this shoot is fun. Hey! A real community event. With great vendors, big names, and the usual Barbary hospitality. This was gonna be fun. Afternoon all, welcome to day one of the whole Pro One Challenge. I think it's our fourth year running this event and it's just grown from year on year. Fantastic to work with the whole cart shoot again and making it quite a big annual event. This competition is definitely here to stick for the future. We've got 920 entries booked in this year over four days, so full on competition. It's a similar course of what we've done previously. It's a non registered event, it's an open event, so it's 120 words sported. It's designed for everyone to have fun, you know, it's a fun course. There's plenty of targets for everyone to suit all abilities. Hopefully, everyone will enjoy it. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll get slated by a few. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of fun. We've got some tricky stands out there. We've got some close targets, some big targets, some fast ones, some slow ones, um, some combination stands, so some super sporting stands. A stand with five singles on it. Stand 11 certainly is going to be a big talking point. We've got that back in this year. Brett Wynn Stanley has shot 110 this morning, and that's leading, leading the way from George Digby on 109. I think there's a couple more out there, but it's easier for me to say stood here looking at the course. Um, we'll, we'll see what comes in for the rest of the week. Back at the Pro One Challenge, probably my favorite shoot of the year. Every year it's just fun. I'm not a big competitive shooter. I find the dryness of competition shooting, the seriousness, is a bit off-putting to what makes me happy when shooting, and this is the antithesis of that. <laughs> Josh and Hugh have done a fantastic job. We asked them to give us something a little bit different, so we have this blend of English sporting, but a super sporting. It's bigger and better this year. There's more entries and a monster prize fund, which I'm clearly not going to compete for. Yeah, I don't quite know what's happened there because the Yorkshire people have put a hand in our pocket and the bad news is my hand went right to the bottom of the pocket. For your first year, you get two grand and 1500 Pro One, which is fantastic. That's a good price. We're paying categories down to 10th place, and classes, I think, we're paying to 5th place. And that's enough of a reason to come here if you want to compete. But honestly, without the prize fund, there isn't much of a shoot with a better atmosphere. There's catering, there's stands. People just sitting around having a beer after they've shot. It's my kind of place to be allowing people to come, shoot our hull. The Pro One is a fantastic car, she's been around a long time. We've got Sovereign, Pro Fiber, Pro Piston. They do give you a competitive edge. 100%, I'm proud to be a hull shooter. You know the product's gonna work, look at the target and do the best you can. Unfortunately, for me, it's probably not that good. But for those with talent... And I'm not one of those guys, but I am selling the cartridges, so everything's cool. <sighs> Honestly, I wasn't feeling that pumped the morning of this shoot. So I owe you a five for five shoot yeah, less than an 80. Last year. But Teague wins because I've got a couple of shiny Teagues in the end. So I opted to bring out an old favourite that would be fun to shoot, but would add no pressure to my scorecard. I walked into stand one as the first man on the squad. I hate all of you. This is sabotage. A right to left rabbit followed by an incoming teal. After powdering the rabbit, I then missed the first deal half a mile in front. Turns out you do actually need to point these things in the right direction. All right, Ivan, get in and straight up, boy. Stand two turned up the heat a little bit. A high left to right crosser with an on report right to left looper. It's about 15 centimeters off the end of your barrel. I think it's time for some pro pistons. This was close, fast, and unforgiving. There was a distraction there. Yeah. Mainly the shine off those chokes. 
Stand 3 was a little like Stand 2, but with the angles and speeds changed ever so slightly. Oh, check your heart rate, 172. <laughs> this caught a lot of people out. It was so familiar and yet required a completely different approach. Shot. Pushing off the first target and sticking with the second just a little more. I get an extra half a second advantage. We can. Do you want me to kill it over the nettles? Go on then. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> All right, it's worth a clay in it. Who cares? Whoa. I can't do quicker that than that. The are there. That was past the beat. Mm. But I'm old. Leave me alone. Walking up the hill, Josh had given us our first taste of a big gap. Clock that a bird is a, uh, what was that, 60 yards? Oh, God. Yeah, that's parkour territory. The first bird shot away from you. The second bird looped up into the air, giving you a short kill zone before the wind dragged it up, out, and away, making it much harder to connect with. But if you leave it late, it's nasty. Stand 5 was the first taste of super sporting. It looks like there's more than one. A bird, which is your till, your B bird, your batu, and your C bird, which is your midi. Yep. And you've got full use of gun. Pro 1's for this stand, I think. Because the Pro 1 Challenge is not a CPSA registered event, they can do what they want. Lovely. 15 stands of English sporting can be quite a boring affair, so stands like this are placed around the course to spice it up. Three single full-use targets were followed by three sim pairs, all of which took a bit of shooting. That's some tasty sim pairs. Not easy, are they? They probably required quite a lot of attention and thought into what you were doing, and I kind of thought I'd just naturally hit them. Oh! oh the next part of the course was in the deer park, stopping on the way to grab a bunch of calippos. Unfortunately, even though Stand 6 was a relatively simple set of teal, I completely threw it in the bin. Tell him what to do. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Unfortunately, I just got stopped eating my clipper halfway through to shoot the stand, and I just made a royal cock up of that. Probably the easiest pair on the course. I shot five of eight. But I've got my clipper back now, so that's all right. Luckily, I popped back on Sunday and shot a few pairs just to prove that I can. Next was another super sporting stand. All very tight and technical, with a background of a grass bank, it made judging these targets a little tricky. The three singles were followed by a report pair, a harder true pair, which was insanely tight for time, and a Rafale pair of dopey right to lefts. Rafale, sometimes called Raphael, is the posh word for a following pair sent from the same trap. We at first, between us, yeah, I've got to shoot we're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> We'd have been all right. Well done, mate. Stand eight was a tasty sim pair that you could shoot both ways. Oh. But the teal shot first, followed by the crosser, certainly felt the right way to me. Oh, well, better than I expected, but... Very nice, man. Thank you. Thank you. Almost like he's a professional. It is. He is a professional. <laughs> stand 9 was another sunken shooting stand. A nasty incomer floated down the bank, followed by a low, fast batu from the left. Just checked in with Josh, who's just come round to check up on how we're doing. There's been a couple of blippy stands, but I'm hoping at this point... 80 out of 120 is only 66%. It's got progressively harder. I doubt it's going to get progressively easier from here on in. I really struggled to get the GTI moving on both these targets, and I walked out with a less than palatable score. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Can I just skip this stand? Oh. <laughs> the rest of the team, however, didn't struggle in the slightest and crushed this stand in a manner I could only dream of. Ivan, well done. What did you shoot that with? Sovereigns? Yeah. Again. I can't really blame the guns, gear, or ice creams here, just my own inadequacies. I made a bad plan. Stand 10 is another super sporting stand. You've got four singles this time instead of three, and we've got some big targets. Overhead duck doesn't show any face, proper edge on. B, simple left to right. C, huge left to right. And D, nasty, tight edge on. Sort of skeet low house three, but after you're shooting those big ones, it's gonna be hard to build your gun speed up for it. I 
genuinely having as much fun as I didn't think I'd have this morning. Honestly, I came here today dreading it. I've had a rough couple of weeks. I wasn't totally in the mood, but it's amazing hanging out with a group of friends, shooting some targets that are hard, but fun, but also fair. This is, there's a reason this is one of my favorite shoots of the year. Just took me 10 minutes to put a smile on my face, that's all. And that smile might get wiped off now, but who cares? When in doubt, I usually lean on Sovereign six and a halfs to give me a confidence boost. I chucked a handful in my pocket and I walked into the cage ready for action. Slowly but surely, these six and a half through the three eighth sparkly gold chokes mushed the targets. The confidence was back. Got it. Well done. <laughs> I took a note from Ivan to take me time and actually think about what I'm doing. Amazing that it works. Managed to straight it. Who cares about missing the easy ones? Stand 11. The Widowmaker. A monster right to left target launched from over 90 meters away. Oh! Welcome to hell. Harder than last year? No, easy. You're closer to the target, so you've got no excuse. Craig's a long way from the target. All right. Yeah, but you've got that big old gun. This target showed no mercy and no signs of slowing down as it roared through the sky at a ridiculous range. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the only silver lining is that it was followed by a fairly simple rising left to right target. Four foot. Four foot at the muzzle, yeah. Four foot in front and right, four foot in the middle. No one's hit it yet. That's scary. It's an ABT target, Matt, so just think of that. <laughs> yeah, if you stood 150 yards from the ABT. I'm oh, happy man. I got the pair. Mate. I don't care. <laughs> that is a big Unbelievable. Hello, oh, baby. I tell you what to do, don't I? You are the king, mate. I want more of your company. Ivan, the main man, hit every single one of these monsters. It's absolutely hammering. What a great sport. Anybody can do it. Everybody can do it. Shoot with a world champion one week. Shoot with an idiot like me the next. What a great event. And me? I felt happy walking out of that stand with a six out of eight. It was four foot and four foot underneath. Yeah? And gun speed. I don't so want to see how to measure stuff. that. I can't keep telling you my trade secrets, can I? No, this is it. Four foot, anyone who has shot this, that's all it takes. And a lovely five eight choke for six and a half. I, I mean, when they hit, there's nothing wrong with breaking no. that target. You just need to put it in the right place. Oh, I was going to have a go, but you hit it, you hit it. My Josh, boy, Josh, Josh, you Josh, set the on. course. My work here is done. Here we go. Oh, Josh Brown! After that beast, things got a little calmer for a stand, with a driven bird followed by an on-report rabu. That's the name for a rabbit target thrown through the air rather than across the ground. It's a great range, isn't it? Josh is, I mean, he won course of the year twice for a reason. He puts on a good, fair course that just stumbles you at every moment. Right. It's all angles. There's something there for everybody. Yeah. It's absolutely enjoyable. And it's super. The, the ground here is always fantastic, especially when you're at the top, because you've got everything from low horizon to short horizons to harsh green yeah. background. It's, it's a cracking course. Stand 13 was six full-use single targets. A huge one off the back and another huge one off the back. But this time we've moved the stand 10 yards further back because apparently we haven't uh, have been humbled enough. There was a close rabbit and astronomically far midi. A looper. A hard teal. An easy teal and a tricky right to left. Hull made, Barbary twisted. Craig, Craig hooks me up, you see. This was huge fun. Oh no, hello, hello. That's a lot of lead. <laughs> what was the you score? That, Johnny? Go on, Ivan, get on. Oh, Ivan is all over the D. You see how quick he was to get the D? Get the he saw the D and he just went for it. Went for it. Went for it. This shoot is a big one. Because of the size of the shooting ground and the quantity of stands to shoot, it takes about three and a half hours to go round. 
meaning there is more of a physical demand than most sporting layouts. Historically, every time I climb this, my talent disappears. Um, there wasn't a lot of it, so it's quite hard to find. It's very small. Uh, you, you only got one cheek, that's the problem. There you go. Yes, it is the full <laughs> yeah, spanking experience. Yeah, it is experience. the full spanking experience. Uh, and he's luckily, it's the same height as him. Honestly, by this point, I was getting tired. That. Oh, that went tits. That was bad did go tits on. <laughs> You're that. saying someone when the ref <laughs> hazing you. In true Josh form, it was time to fix bayonets. Four pairs on report, left to right from the shed. Marginal gains. Marginal gain. gains, mate. I mean, it's not my gun. He's telling me to do it. I'm gonna listen to him. To He's right. the best Mind person you. here. After a 40-yard edge on crosser came a looper just seven feet away from the muzzle. Hit or miss, this stand was the perfect finish to a course that really did test every distance, every background, every colour and every speed you could throw a target at. Oh, well I'm done. Time for a beer. All done, it was time for lunch and a go on David's challenge. Well done, Josh. I like this because we're all the same height now. I quite like this. I feel empowered. You look real good. You're both more handsome from my perspective. <laughs> well done, mate. That was um, somehow better than last year, and last year was really good. Yeah, thank you. No, I mean, listen, huge team effort. That's our fifth year. The effort that's gone in, and hopefully it shows around the course what, what the effort that's gone in and, and um, to make it the event it is, it is phenomenal. The it's fact really that good. you have 100 sporting on at the same time just for fun. Yeah, no, and that's a big thing, and I think that's what makes the event very special, is we've got our members sort of practice out open as well, which is open to all, um, and it means that, you know, these guys the trade village, there's more of an atmosphere there with people going around it, and yeah, it, it makes it the event we want. Um, and it's grown year on year, keep yeah. people wanting that, more. That is fantastic, it's a great factor for us. Our event's sold out, it's brilliant. And so this event wouldn't happen without the sponsorship from, you know, whole cartridge, these guys, the, the, what they put into this event, you know, 920 goodie bags out there, which, uh, you know, the cartridge, the cash that's gone in, it's, it makes it a, a really, real good. Event. It's not They're all hissable. There's Clearly. nothing. There's nothing crazy. It's a bit sneaky in places. Oh, it's sort of Davis Challenge pool shoot, and that's been flat out all day. The boys have been out there all day. And again, it's entertaining. It's not your, like your standard pool shoot that's very boring with, you know, a simultaneous pair which you have ten shots or whatever. We need to go and shoot that. Yeah. I might come and witness it as well. All right, should we grab some gear. Let's do that. Is it a parkour job? Ah, there's a good battery up there, so I parkour won't. job. <laughs> So we've got seven different targets, okay, sequence one through to seven, one being the easiest target, seven being the hardest. Then relative numbers is the relative points, okay, so you hit yep. one, you hit, you get one, hit two, hit two, so on. Yep. So on the one to seven sequence, you must hit the one target to then score the colour. So if you miss the first bird, you can't then kill your colour and it count, you've got to kill the one. Um, and then you've got three nomination pairs where you pick two different colours. So it could be six and seven, it could be then four, then five, okay. or seven, then five, whatever. Um, okay. And the highest score wins. It's very simple. Let's see how it's done, Josh. Well, I was hoping he was going to do that. That was tasty. I said, follow me. So Five, well. seven, please. I'll go five, seven as well. Oh. And the winner is oh, oh Josh Brown. Anyway, I got beat actual, by someone in the England team. On the actual team. course, did you shoot more than eighty? Yeah, I shot a ninety-one, mate. Even if I said ninety this year, it's still beating me. Yeah, so maybe next year I have to set the bar at hundred, and I'll have to, you have to have like try. No, no, you need to set the bar row. higher. I think your expectations of me are particularly low. Yeah, you I saw keep, the ninety-seven, and I keep losing money. Oh, well, I'm gonna have to go and keep give this to it. um to Rich now because yeah. he broke a true pair or broke a pair with one on stand. Oh, and the same thing, crows. Yeah. I think that's harder than last year. It's interesting. I think 66 is actually leading out of possible 72. So well, there's some tasty shots here today. Yeah. It was time to head home for the day. The Pro One was not done, however. It runs for four days in order for the 910 competitors to get through without delay. A few days off with the family and I was back up for Sunday to see friends, shoot that challenge again, and watch the super final. Morning all, welcome to day four of the Pro One Challenge, Sunday, the final day. 
We've had some interesting scores in over the last three days. Dave Ferryman's still leading the way with a 115, a massive score. I think anyone who's shot the course um, will agree that that is far too many to what's out there. With Adam Cocker and Andy Moon on 112, Richard Foles and Charlie Foles on 111s. End of place Sunday, the top six will go into 25 Bird Super Six final. So shooting off for the sixth place as it stands will be on 110s, Brett Wins Danny, James Bradley Day, Sean Stacey, Wayne Martin and Rick Wyatt. So lots of good names to go out there today. We've still got the likes of Richard Bunning, Phil Gray, Sam Green, Billy Bourne, James Atwood, um, plus many others who, you know, who could contend and, and, and beat that. So we'll see what happens today. Weather seems a bit stiff today, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, yesterday, Johnny, was pretty pretty breezy here yesterday. We had some pretty torrential downpours yesterday, so um, all credit. I mean, Sean Stacey shot 110 yesterday afternoon, which was, which was an impressive, impressive bit of shooting in that weather. I think he went 9 or 10 stands straight, so, I mean, that, that's fairly impressive. It was pretty horrid out there yesterday. A um, bit of breeze here this morning. There's been a breeze every day. I don't think we've got any rain forecast. Fingers crossed it stays dry, but we'll see what happens. I thought we knew who would be up there, but Richard Bunning just shot a 117. Mmm. Interesting, isn't it? I genuinely thought that would be an impossible score. He's proved us wrong. <laughs> that he has. We might have a new name on there this year. You never can tell. You never can tell. I'm quite excited. It's only about an hour until the yeah. Super Finals. A few squads left out on the course. Absolutely. Some big scores still to come in. I think some big names still out there shooting. Yeah, I, um, he's all to play for. It is indeed. And then after that, we've got that super final which gets even more interesting and so they carry their score into the super final and then they'll shoot another 25 targets to add on top of that i'm excited so am i honestly richard i didn't think anyone would beat dave's 115. a 117 is unbelievable thanks mate we'll wait for the super final start two um, ahead of uh, well dave's. i know two ahead but even so Super finals, you know what, uh, big birds, it could be anyone's. You yeah. got this, mate. You got this. <laughs> yeah, we need it. <laughs> yeah. Come five o'clock and the top six shooters climb the hill to shoot off for the top spot in the super final. They were followed by a huge crowd of spectators. Excited to see who would be Pro One champion. Dave Ferriman shot 115 on day one and honestly, nobody thought that it would be beaten. They were joined by Andy Moon, Phil Marks and Adam Cocker, who all shot a fantastic 112 out of 120. But that Sunday, Richard Bunning had walked off the course with a 117 and Mr. Gray had taken a 116. The format of the Super Final was four stands of three pairs, with an extra single on the last stand to make a total of 25 targets. The pressure of shooting in front of this big crowd at big targets is something that many of us will never experience. But from what I understand, the added pressure makes even a simple set of targets like the first stand a different gravy. The shooters worked their way down to the fourth peg, with the scores rising and falling as the hits and misses came. With each stand, the targets becoming progressively harder. The last peg of the Super Final started with a single looper target at 80 yards. This is a target most of us would think was impossible. And yet Mr. Ferriman and Mr. Marks smashed it. Both were shooting 1600 feet per second cartridges and yet the delay to that target breaking was big. The quality of shooters and shooting in this final was worth waiting for. And as always, I implore you to grab a beer after you're done at your next shoot and wait to watch the super final. You will not be disappointed. That was a serious display of shooting. It was awesome. Oh, if people don't stay for these things, and I, I, I get that perhaps you have to stay a bit later, but every time you see the best of the best doing mm. what they do is, is wild. That last peg. That was really, really something extreme. We started off, we thought shooting's getting really good. Next time shooting's really good. And then I looked and thought, oh, it's getting a bit, uh, it's getting a little bit tougher. Then we got to the end and went, 
Oh my gosh, that is tough. That's like an 80 yard loop. Oh, that, was, that was incredible. And the two guys that shot it, oh. and there was a delay. I think they were shooting Hull, but wow, what a performance that was from all of them. Spectacular shooting. To be able to stand up there and mm. shoot to any level in front of a big crowd of people, the yeah. pressure is yeah. something that yeah. very few people ever experienced, right? But that was, that was wild. It was. In the end, Richard Bunning kept his cool and extended his lead over the pack to earn the Pro One trophy. You were pretty confident before, like right? you were oozing confidence. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Yeah. You said a few tweaks to your gun and Yeah, a few that's... tweaks and um, your when, you, when, you, when you're shooting well, it all seems easy and it, and it came together. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah, great support from Hold Cartridge um, and Beretta and Swatcom, Clay Clo. I had a brilliant team around me and um, getting to the end of the season, it's been, it's been a pleasure to be here and be part of it. Yeah, right, it great a, event. A joy to witness from our Thank you, yeah, well. cheers. Thank well you. Done. Well yeah, done. thanks very much. Congratulations to those top six shooters, as well as all of the other class and category winners from the shoot. Congratulations to the Barbary team as well for running yet another fantastic Pro One Challenge. And my thanks also to Hull Cartridge, without whom this event would not be possible. And finally, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching, guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.